Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to some of y'all and peace out to the rest of you. Hit the share button because the message is more important than the messenger. Uh, there's no need to take too long with this one because I really just have to remind you about something. I'm going to start by giving the shouts out where they belong. Shout out to Don Calypso and The Other Side because both of them told me about Jada Black's video about Nichelle Turner. 47 years old with a predilection for educated thugs as successful as she is. When I looked up her biography, I couldn't find the name of her father or a definitive statement that he was or wasn't in her life growing up. But a website said she grew up with a single mother and then she went to college, so she might not have grown up Huxtable. Now, I can tell you that when they grow up Huxtable, it can still turn out bad. As a matter of fact, I know ladies in her same age group because that's my age group. I've seen such ladies that grew up Huxtable because they grew up with me. And that's how they turn out. But hearing her say what she said on the podcast with Shaq and Spice Adam, old hilarious self. Shout out to him. It reminded me of something from the middle 90s. I was 19 in Atlanta. And I was close to finishing my freshman year in college, and uh, one day I was on MARTA. As you know, MARTA stands for rapidly, I'm sorry, moving Africans rapidly through Atlanta. And on this train ride, it was all Africans. And there were two sisters sitting across from me, and uh, they looked to be in their mid-30s. When a MARTA cop one of us shines, and that's a compliment when I say it, by the way, walked through the train and she was silent as he passed us, but when he was out of earshot of us, she looked at the other sister and said, the cops just looked too goody-goody for her and that she needed someone with some gangster in The irony was that this officer was jacked. I mean, he was in the gym whenever he wasn't on duty, you could look and tell. He could arrest any idness he could catch. He was nobody's punk. Additionally, I knew by that age that I was not any sister's image of an idness or even the man that could defend myself. I didn't look like the kind that could. But what she didn't know was that I was a college student. She also didn't know that I could fight well enough to not be an easy target better at that age than I am now. Had she known I was a college student, I would have been too goody-goody. And had she known about my last fight less than a year before that, in high school, she would have thought I was an idness. So she and the other lady began to carry on this sympathetic conversation about what they wanted, but I knew that these were the kinds of guys that had to go to jail and prison at some point in their lives. And Being in Atlanta didn't mean that you never got handcuffed when caught. As many black officers as there are, they still handcuff you when they catch you for a crime or when there's a warrant out. So understand, this was almost 30 years ago. And these ladies looked to be in their 30s. They would probably be exactly 60 today. Do you think they outgrew this? I mean, not only do we as men not care if they outgrew it because of their age, but they probably didn't outgrow that phase. See, we tend to think that this hybristophilia and thug passion preference is some phase through which adolescent girls go and maybe they don't outgrow it if they're ghetto, but it's not. Among sisters, educated and old, they stay in it. Women older than Nichelle Turner are into thugs. Nichelle is close to my age, as I said, and if she grew up Huxtable, she'd be the daughter of my mom's friends, and I I know these ladies, including the ones that actually grew up Huxtable, which Nichelle maybe did not. But see, even they don't outgrow this preference just because they live long enough. It's too ingrained. So do you think that Nichelle definitely should have outgrown it? Yes. Do you think she did? No. Do you think she's by herself? No. She felt comfortable stating this preference with a camera on her and a podcast with two other celebrities, Spice Adams and Shaq. You must understand that sisters 
tie their own black identity to being strong, but they tie your and my black male identity to the enemy's worst stereotypes of us. It's too deeply ingrained for them to outgrow this. We really are two different groups of people. See, many of us aren't ethnic men or women, but many of us are raised by single moms to think that many of us are ethnic and many, and this is guys and girls alike that grow up raised to think this way. So while not being itness, they still won't turn on itness either. They're not our people as thinking black men. As far as the women go, they're not our people with a few exceptions, but they have the women who are our people scared to come out and say so. This means we're truly by ourselves as non-stereotypical black men. Until we find someone that is usually not a sister considering the pressure under which they are to not identify themselves to us. You NS black men, non-stereotypical black men, aren't going to find a way to match up with sisters in most cases. And the wires aren't much better long term, though they do start off much better to us in the beginning. In the beginning, but you know, they're going to. All puns intended show their true colors too. This is why I say to you that the safest options are not only outside of the USA, but outside of the West. An educated thug? How would you be that? I'm sure there's a way, but how do you impress on her that you're an educated thug without causing her to doubt that you're whichever of the two that she finds most impressive? Will she decide you're pretending to be a thug or pretending to be educated? See, they're asking for things and combinations that they themselves would not expect to actually find. Would doubt if they saw it. Now, we know that Boom Sheikha and Bon Quisha and Sophista Ratchet Sapphire usually assume that a man is pretending to be whatever she wants him to be. And we also know that she's more likely to doubt his idness stereotypicality. Yeah, I made that word up. So that tells you what's one she truly wants. She wants the thug more than the educated. Think about it. See, Nichelle is completely single by herself. Completely. It is not the educated that she has a hard time finding. It is the thug. Now, she wants him to be a thug that reads, and how was he supposed to disclose to her that he reads if he can't disclose that to other idnists themselves? How was she supposed to find this out? If he tells her, why would she believe him? You see how foolish this gets? She wants a man that can scare ninjas off of her in the hood and then not embarrass her in front of her corporate colleagues. No, nah, pick one, Turner. We all must choose. Does she want Nipsey Hussle? Well, his positivity got him killed for trying to spread it in a negative environment, and I ain't knocking him for what his killer did to him. But I'm telling you what it ended up with. Does she want Tupac? Oh, that's right. He got killed and Suge Knight survived. Does she want Ghost since he's fictional? Oh, that's right. Even his fictional character couldn't survive in fiction. Do you see a pattern here or am I black annoyed? This is why I diss Miss Elite and her platform. Miss Elite, we deal with the Nichelle Turners every time we want to match up with a sister that's not a ratchet. We deal with the preference that even attorneys and hostesses have for itness guys that can't stay both free and alive long enough to grow old with these ladies. We're not those men, though, you see. Most of us aren't those men. When you say that black men are giving Latinas a pass just because they're not black or that black boys have it in their genes to not want black women, that's a cop out. We're the ones being judged by a different set of standards from other men by the same women and these same women are you. It's us who have to be itness tattered, felonious, and everything else negatively stereotypical while you are now beginning to consider other men mostly Wyatts with none of the swag and none of the negative stereotypes. It's like, because we're black, we have to be exactly the kind of guy that will earn fast and quick money and then go to prison and leave you with that ill-gotten bag and without us, but some corner clout, some pavement pull, some roadway rank, some sidewalk status. But the non-black men, mostly the Wyatts, ain't got to be none of that. They can be the normal guys that work jobs and make enough money or not enough. And you'll never demand they have a felony or go to prison to prove their manhood to you. They get to be exactly the same black men you can't stand or respect 
except they're not black. See, we actually do leave Latinas who want bad dudes and always test us. We leave white women who want us just to prove that they're cool. We leave either of them for their bad attitudes or for fetishizing us, however you want to define fetishizing. You actually approve of Wyatts that are just like the black men you not only don't want but can't even respect and can't respect any other black women for choosing for being too white. Miss Elite, you posted that screenshot of a lady who calls herself Goddess Infinity. Why is she lamenting and what's she crying for? Because, I mean, I would think a deity doesn't have to cry, right? Called herself Goddess Infinity, lamenting that her son wouldn't prefer black women. Well, in that lament, she attributed it to his black male genes, but not to sisters' attitudes. The same attitudes that sisters don't have when they get them a zaddy. Hell, Karis and Zex didn't even have to protect her. Serena Williams' zaddy didn't and doesn't have to, and he got to pop her cherry and cream pie her before marriage, evidenced by her pregnancy during their wedding, and for which Richard Williams probably didn't want to go to the wedding. I don't blame him. Not because she has to be with a shine, but because she doesn't demand as much from Master Junior as she does from us shines. Hell, look at Tiffany Haddish old self and how she can't stand Common like that. What if Common was a Wyatt? Years ago, we'd have said that if he was a Wyatt, his chances with her or any other sister would have been slimmer. Now we're seeing enough to know that him not being a Wyatt nor an Idnis is why he can't be enough for her few options having tail. We see the game now. You and Nichelle are really saying the same thing. Either be a Wyatt or be an Idnis that the Wyatts will come to pick up one day and arrest so you won't have to stay with him for long. That's why black men are losing interest in sisters. We're sick and tired of having to get on the prison pipeline to qualify. Your mindset towards black men is like Richard Pryor joked decades ago. You look at black men and you say, why should you be happy? Our answer to that is now becoming the reason I close out by saying black heterosexual, non-select and non-stereotypical male power. Just cause you don't like it when we are, you male imitating hyenas. You want a Wyatt? Admit that's your preference and go get one without talking so bad about us that even the Wyatts find the stats and realize you're lying from jump. Yes, go get them. We will notice that we gave other women of color a chance and you went straight for Master Junior, but most of the time we won't even ask why. We'll let you do you just like we let you do you when they showed up in West Africa and you married them and got mad when they didn't take you in large numbers back to Denmark. We've always let you do you. You're just mad because we stopped letting you vilify us unchallenged. You're just mad because we won't let you lie and say that we pushed you away when you actually pushed us away. You should hear how you sound to us and even Wyatt men when you're talking to them. Mm-hmm, massa, that's a bad ninja boss. He's beats me because I's got these here naps and big bantu lips and this wide equatorial nose. Eyes can't help that. He a savage Nicarilla boss. Just making babies and leaving them. Why? He's was so happy when you released them King Kong movies. He said he's ain't never looked so good on screen before, boss. The whole time, Mr. Wyatt's listening and remembering, remembering the normal and, and productive men he knew and, and knows. And he's thinking, they don't sound like that, so why does she? She's straight out of a Klansman's dream. See, in the end, you and Nichelle are telling us two halves of the same message. Get back shine until we need you to give and not get back in exchange. You're not a man, you're a ninja. Act like it. And this is why it's not just SYSBM all day because we like it. It's SYSBM till you surrender or until extinction because you two insisted on it. Thank you to the audience for listening. As always, black call, black mind, black out, assalamu alaikum, and black heterosexual, non-select, non-stereotypical male power, just because these two don't like it, and black patriarchy until extinction of judgment day.